don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Ugh, ugh, serious crap. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, Dark Horde Podcast, attempt number two. Had a bit of uh, technical situations, but seems like we ironed them out for this particular episode, so we're good to go. We got three news stories, but uh, first I got a gripe. It's actually going to be a um, a year for the Dark Horde Podcast on January the 18th. That's when we released the very first episode. And I don't know if it's COVID, but it's... It really is moving extremely slow. It's like we're not getting out there. So do me a favor. Pause right now, unless you're here live. But pause anyway. Hit that like. Share it. Retweet it. Put it on your Facebook. Put it on your Instagram. Do something. Because basically the Dark Horde will be around for another year. And if we can't, you know, get it out there, it's going to go. There won't be a Dark Horde podcast in 2022. Uh, and I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just so into aliens that uh, I'm just not reaching the paranormal folks. I, I don't know what it is. It's weird. But still, maybe they're a more serious bunch. Maybe that's what it is. A lot of funnier people in UFOs than there are in paranormal. But who says it can't be made fun of? So come on, for fuck's sake, give me a break. Anyway, it is what it is. So we will be here as the Dark Horde Podcast. At least, uh, uh, like I said, through January 18th of 2022. And uh, hopefully there's no COVID scares or anything like that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, You know, apparently I got to do things differently. So we might see about uh, having folks on here. I know Chris Garcia is ready to come back in the new year. He's got got shit to say. So we'll be uh, bringing Chris back to uh, enlighten us on some of the events that folks might experience in their own personal lives as they call in to get that psychic connection going. Uh, besides that, you know, it's uh, it's really difficult, I guess, to get folks on here to experience. It's kind of like UFOs, right? And aliens and alien abductions. Like no one, would, Nobody wants to go on a podcast and identify themselves and say, hey, I got probed. And just like I'm sure that um, hauntings and ghosts and demons, oh my, it's uh, really personal, I guess, to folks, almost at, on a religious level. So it's hard to get folks to come in and talk about stuff like that. I, that's what I assume. But uh, we're going to make a okay, go at it in 2021 because, uh, for fuck's sake, we got to get this thing moving. Anyway, this will be the last episode for the Dark Horror Podcast for this year, 2020. We'll pick it up back again in January. And uh, hopefully we'll see. We'll talk to Chris. Maybe he'll be the first episode in January. I I don't know. It's very possible. But we'll see. The three articles today, two of them have to do with real estate. So (laughs) batten down the hatches. Because if you are involved in a real estate transaction anytime soon, for fuck's sake, really, you need to be prepared. You need to get ready. And it's funny because a lot of people bring this up. You know, kind of uh, joking around and jest. 
They'll say something about buying a new property. Oh, I hope that's just not haunted. Or they'll say something like, well, I hope I hope nobody died there. But these are real things that happen. This is not uh, something that you should just, you know, poo-poo under the rug like your dog does. And make believe that the shit you smell is not really there. Because there is a, there's an issue here. And it's something that you won't immediately know unless someone comes out and tells you. And that's the first article we're going to talk about today. Um, and it's, it's crazy. Then Bigfoot. For all you Bigfoot lovers, what in the hell is going on? What, in a, what an interesting find when it comes to Bigfoot DNA. I just want to know how they got the DNA. And sadly enough, the article doesn't say that. But it does give us a glimpse into what folks are thinking about. And so, you know, it's one of these things where, you know, Bigfoot is either ancient or Bigfoot is, you know, an E.T. Um, slave, soldier or something like that. Nobody knows. But uh, we do know that we have an article coming up that's going to tell us what somebody found regarding that DNA. All good things coming your way but as it is as it is customary on this podcast we'll play some music and it's weird because a lot more people are coming out saying i like the music i like it too actually that's why i play it but i play it because it gives me time to reset to get ready for the next article otherwise all this shit will just run together and (laughs) i can do that trust me very easily check out this track
I don't know about you guys, but I was I was thinking today, what about um resolutions? You know, everybody does this big thing about New Year's resolutions and they start thinking about it I don't know how early, but usually I don't think about it till like a few days before. Because I'm no I'm gonna break every single one of those fucking things. So it's like yeah, I'm just in it for the sport, to be honest. Not not any follow through. Like, um thanks to COVID, like this year I didn't make it to the gym not fucking once. Uh, which is disastrous. Like, if you're someone that's used to working out all the time, and all of a sudden you don't, it is, um, it's horrible. But, uh, you know, I can't see myself working out with uh, a mask on, because it just doesn't feel right. So I went out and I purchased all this stuff to do this at home. So it's going to be great. It's going to be great. But all of this to say, I wonder, like, what would someone, a psychic like Chris Garcia, what is their opinion on New Year's resolutions, especially when they have that they have that foresight. They can see the future in many cases. Some not as well as others, but hell, what can you do? You know, because I, you know, I I would just imagine you going to a psychic and either you already have New Year's resolutions that are solid and you're you're really putting your mind to it, and you go to a psychic and then they fuck it all up for you, and then you're like, what do I do now? You know, because then you sit around. Waiting for doom and gloom, to be honest, so what can you do? Here's the shit that's scary as hell. When you think about that you're going to buy a place, like over the last year, 11 months to be exact, if you want to count, we had a lot of uh, articles about places that were being sold that were known to be haunted, you know. And just the just the fact that you would be able to own a haunted place. And some of these guys make money off of it, right? They do, like, tours and shit. So you can go in and tour the haunted-ass place, hear the stories of why it's haunted. And we even visited one here on the Dark Horde, to be honest, here in Texas. And hopefully visiting another one next year as well including some video footage. But still, this is the kind of stuff, if you're a regular Jane or Joe, and you're buying a place, this is supposed to be your home, it's in a nice area, it's a uh, walking distance to the kids' school, or it's right next to the park that you like to run at, but you don't know that there's something ominous happening in the inside. Things that go bump in the night. And I'm not talking about... Uh, any relations either. I'm talking about stuff that should not be going on at all. There's a real estate agent, apparently, that has a sixth sense for homes in Baltimore. And um, she actually, on her real estate signs that she uh, props up at the front of the property, she'll put on there, not haunted. She does this once she's convinced that the home is free of ghosts. That's just, I don't know. You kind of think it's a gimmick, right? But apparently, it's not. So much so that, um, yeah, unlike in, uh, there's places like New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Minnesota. Those places, you have to disclose whether or not the place has some issues. Some haunted issues. Now, uh, Joy, uh, what was that, Shushinsky, what a great name, 40-year-old real estate agent out of Baltimore, apparently makes sure that the place is not haunted before you buy it, before you even consider it. She's going to go in and let you know, give you that warm feeling inside, even though she's not required to under uh, uh, the law in Maryland. She's not supposed to let you know. It's okay if it's haunted. Like, if you live anywhere else, you're pretty much screwed. You are. But she goes the extra step. Now, it makes you wonder, why would she go the extra step to make sure that potential buyers and new homeowners know that the uh, property is not haunted? I mean, could it be of a, of a personal experience? Could it be that she uh, herself was recently um, hauntificated, if you will? Yeah, it turns out that um, Shashinsky, I'll really just call it Joy, because that Shashinsky is, uh, doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Joy 
was a, a recent experiencer when it comes to hauntings. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, during this COVID year, the pandemic, she uh, moved into a property. Yeah, in the spring. And uh, along with her was the uh, the cat and the dog. The cat actually is uh, a little famous in the area on Instagram, named Killer. Killer was a badass cat who had a following. Joy actually moved into this place, and uh, prior to her moving in, the place was abandoned for eight years. Doesn't that give you a sign? Doesn't that tell you something like, there's no homeowner there to show you around? Uh, no, there's just uh, a real estate agent. You know, and at that point, she gave gave no fucks about ghosts and stuff like that because she didn't believe. And still, you move in. You figure no one's been here for a while. You don't question it. That's eight years. That's a long time for a house to be empty and not be on some kind of a list to be torn down by the uh, local government. But still, she moved in. Periodically, she would hear doors in the house at night opening and slamming shut without any explanation. Every night, she says, I'd make sure it was locked and I'd wake up again and it would be open. She's referring to doors. Having heard it open and close all night, she said, now, the funny thing is that, you know, you would think, well, maybe it's a cat or the dog that's fucking around in the house at night. No. It wasn't that, because apparently the cat, <laughs> the cat was no sucker. The cat would actually hide with her in the bedroom. So maybe it was the dog, who knows. Uh, but it is really, really strange. Now, she said when she moved in early during the pandemic, um, it was really hard for her to buy furniture because, you know, the big shutdown, right? You, you couldn't do shit. You had to be locked up in your house. So the house was uh, pretty empty when she moved in there. And a lot of strange things had started happening. We had the slamming and opening of the doors at night. Why doesn't this stuff happen during the day? Or what you got to hide? Uh, Joy says that her cat, Killer, would make really strange yowling noises anytime the cat walked past a particular corner of a room near the front of the house. I mean, there's your sign. Like, either the dog took a bad, a really bad shit there that the cat's complaining about, or there's a problem when it's a corner. Listen, I get freaked out. Anytime Bugs is staring at something, I just freak out, because he will do that. Like, he will sit there and stare at a wall like he's trying to look, uh, you know, three houses down the street through the damn wall. It's like, what, what is he doing? You know, and after, like, wake up. What the hell are you doing, dog? You know, but then you start staring at the damn wall to see if anything's there. That's the part that just gives me bananas. Uh, on top of that, the the cat would also stare at that corner for long passages of time and meow at it. Again, either the cat is having serious problems or there is something wrong with that place. Um, the dog also appeared to be aware of that there was something, some kind of a presence in the house. Uh, Joy says that it was just freaky. Uh, the other thing is, she lived alone with her two pets. Uh, you know, Killer the cat and uh, the dog who remained nameless. They don't even name the dog on here because Killer had all the followings. Um, she says, I also knew it couldn't be the cat making a noise in the middle of the night either because uh, she was locked up in the bedroom with me. I didn't tell too many people about what was happening. I was worried they think I was a little crazy. And that's the just that's just the way it goes with these type of situations, these hauntings. You think people are going to think that you are batshit crazy and that your cat needs some meds too. Completely nuts. She says that this experience is what made her a believer in uh things like hauntings and ghosts and stuff like that. Uh, she wasn't too keen on it before, so, I mean, what can you do? This is, a, it brought her, you know, it opened up her eyes. So now she's helping new homeowners and people who are looking to purchase by putting on there that the place is not fucking haunted. And even still, you know, how does she know 
How, how did she know? She go, Nobody goes to see houses in the middle of the night, you know, 4, 3, 2 o'clock in the morning. So how did she know it's not haunted? Because apparently before she got into this place, she had no clue. No clue at all. Now, sadly to report that uh, Joy's cat killer actually died in May. And what she found even more fascinating was that the activity at night um, also stopped. Literally, the cat died, and the craziness at night died also. No more opening and closing of doors all night long. And she said it was really strange. She said the coincidence of it all made me a believer in ghosts. It's like killer took the ghost with him. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you think about it, someone's in your house, right? Like you had the place all tidied up, all nice and haunted. And uh, eight years later, somebody shows up with a damn cat and a dog. And and maybe when you were alive, you had uh, cat allergies. So you piss off the cat all the time. You slam shit. You, you're pissed off. You're completely pissed off. Then the cat dies. And then it's like, <laughs> the cat died. Got rid of it. Out of my home you go. Uh, but then again, was it something that killed off the cat? Uh, there is a picture in this article, if you look at the link that's in the description. That is, um, the cat himself was pretty scary. Just a weird looking cat. Big ass head on it too. It wasn't a tiny cat, that's for sure. But still, did the cat die naturally or was it the house that got rid of the cat? I would imagine that if I owned a home, I'm not, I'm not a fan of cats, but uh, you know, I wouldn't go out uh, killing them. But <laughs> um, I would imagine that if, if you were connected to your home in that manner where you just cannot leave for whatever fucking reason, you know, going to the white light is not is not cutting it for you. I would imagine you'd be pretty pissed off if somebody brought in a cat into your house. You know, you'd be causing a, a ruckus. I just feel like the previous homeowner wasn't into cats. That's what went down. But thankfully, Joy has taken her experience and turned it around to a new real estate level. Now, I just wonder, in all these other states where folks are required to disclose whether or not a place is haunted, how the hell does that go? How do you get that? How do you even get through that transaction? You know, telling people that uh, the house that they admire, that they've driven by like you know a million times, already furnished the place, have all your furniture laid out. How do you go up and tell them as a real estate agent that it's haunted? I guess if you're lucky, you will come across someone that doesn't give a damn about hauntings and will just buy it anyway. And then they'll become a believer later on or a movie of the week. Nobody knows. Uh, check out this particular article. It's in the description. There's a little bit more to it. But uh fascinating story nonetheless. But I'll tell you this one. As a future home buyer... Um, if I saw a sign that says it's not haunted, I'm not going to believe them. I mean, really, just leave it alone. I'll figure it, I'll figure it out on myself, just as most people do. Kind of like Joy did. She figured it out the hard way. The scary-ass way. Crazy. All I ever wanted was you, but you left me alone inside these empty, broken walls. And I can't see but it's obvious I know that you left me alone inside this empty broken hall and now you'll be the reason why my soul is tainted Cause I'm
Have you spent most of your life wondering what the hell is Bigfoot? There are so many conspiracies, ideas, whatever it is, wet dreams about what Bigfoot is. No one really knows, right? Is it a, you know, ancient ape? Is it some crazy hybrid? Did some alien drop this fucker off here and it likes to play hide and seek with people? What, what is Bigfoot? Who is Bigfoot? Why is he here? Why do people see him? Is he really something people imagine? Because really, if you're out in the middle of the woods, you see a lot of shit there, right? A lot of shadows, crazy uh, lighting, you know, things uh, breaking through, all the trees. I mean, I mean, come on, let's be honest. It is very possible that you will see something that's not even there. The problem with that is that uh, some things that really aren't there don't leave behind DNA. That's a big issue. And uh, apparently a professor out of Oxford made that an issue for himself. He wants to figure out what is Bigfoot, the Yeti, Abominable, the Sasquatch, the Yahweh. What, what is he? What in the hell is he? He wants to figure that out because he's got some skills. And that is that uh, he can perform tests on DNA himself. Doesn't send it to a lab. He's got it. Oxford Professor Brian Sykes, he says that the latest DNA test found a perfect match. Okay, hold on to your big girl panties. A perfect match between Yeti hair that were sampled from the Himalayas. I mean, where the fuck else is the Yeti going to be? And a uh, polar bear that went extinct more than 40,000 years ago. 40,000 years. A bear went extinct. And now he's leaving DNA all over the Himalayas. It almost is shocking to me. How does this make sense? How could it be? Is he a time traveler? That's another thing. Uh, People saying that maybe Bigfoot or Yeti or whatever the hell you call him in your neck of the woods. That uh, maybe it's an anti-dimensional traveler. So maybe he's a time traveler too. Who knows? It is incredibly nutty. Basically, this uh, world-leading scientist put out a call across the globe for samples from people that have come across this particular, you know, cryptid to send them in because he wanted to test them to try to figure out what is it. Now, I don't... (laughs) It doesn't really say what his fascination is with Bigfoot, if he had an experience where he was a kid or, you know, he just he just likes it. He's just uh, fascinated by it. But um, he is a professor of human genetics at Oxford. And he put out that call. Basically, please, if you got Bigfoot samples, such as hair or uh, semen. And really, if, if you got Bigfoot semen samples, this probably would you probably would be seeing a lot of therapists. I just want to put that out there. Um, 
But basically, he says, uh, I've got the most sophisticated DNA test available, and I want to analyze the DNA of this uh, mythical creature, if you want to do. Uh, there's a quote in here from him that says, I want to find answers, and that should be the basis of any scientific investigation. If there is anything really exciting, we will find it. So, you know, he gives no fucks. He says he's got the tools, he's got the time, so send in your samples. Now, luckily for us, you know, because uh, this can't be something that just, it can't be something that he is, is just coming out of the goodness of his heart. All of this, uh, as well as this reporting, is tied to a three-part documentary uh, on a series on this uh, cable channel called Blaze. And it starts New Year's Day. The first episode is going to be about the legend of the Yeti, uh, which is believed to be roaming the Himalayan mountains. And listen, apparently according to DNA, that might be true. They're going to cover things from the uh, the first British uh, diplomat who first heard stories about the wild men attacking people in 1832, uh, all the way up to a journalist who first coined the phrase abominable snowman in 1921 after uh, you know coming across different descriptions of the Yeti. So this is tied to this docu-series, if you will. So listen, it's a, a, I think it's a fascinating find. Number one, the fact that this DNA is being connected to an extinct polar bear from 40,000 years ago. But the fact that this could really tie a lot of things together. And folks who find, especially in the United States, Canada, and the Americas, you know, we're always hearing of people coming across evidence of Bigfoot, whether it be hair or uh, footprints or anything like that. This is your your chance to shine, to take your so-called evidence. Not only would it prove that you're not hoaxing people on Bigfoot, but you can have this uh, world-renowned uh, DNA professor actually test it for you and let you know what you got. Now, if it comes out and said that Jimmy Bob was the one who was scraping around the woods there, rubbing his uh, rear end, and leaving all that hairy stuff behind. I mean, listen, at least you know. You'll be in the know. You know what happened. You can uh, talk to Billy Bob about his activities. There's uh, This article actually has a lot of stories, too, about people that, um, this, that uh, Brian Sykes, the professor, actually interviewed, and uh, stories that he's heard, from uh, folks who have come across Bigfoot and Yeti. Um, it's really crazy. Uh, there's a story here where in Nepal, he uh, he met a uh, one Sherpa who witnessed a Yeti attack 50 years ago when he was 16 years old. 16! Now you think at 16, you know, a little Sherpa dude up in the mountains in the Himalayas, you know, he's uh, pulling your leg because he got nothing better to do. I mean, besides freezing his ass off, uh, the guy's name at the time, the 16 year old, was Sona Hisha. He described being on a high, uh, being high on the mountain. <laughs> Not really, Sona. Were you really high on the mountain or were you high on the mountain? That's what we needed to figure out. Anyway, he was high on the mountain with his uh, uh, Sopikio or Sopkio. Sopkio. Uh, it, that's basically a cross between a yak and a cow. That's used for trekking. And we've seen him in the movies. You've seen those guys. Um, well, he heard a, a really loud noise. Really loud, freaky, scary noise. And he wasn't sure if it was because he was high in the mountain or he was high in the mountain. No one really knows. What he says is this. We were really scared that the Yeti was going to kill us. And so what they did, him and his uh, other Sherpa folks that were high on the mountain, they decided to sleep in a rock cave um, just to hide. Uh, the uh, the Sopkios were left outside, of course, because that's what they're, they're bred for, right? They could handle the cold high on the Himalayan mountain. <laughs> uh, the next morning, what they found was that the two of the Sopkios were uh, killed, eaten by the Yeti. 
They said that they did get a uh, a look at the Yeti when the noise was first heard. And there's a quote here that says, The Yeti looked like a human walking on two legs. He was dark brown, but his face was white. I don't know. You guys, you've got to make the call on this one. But uh, that is a, a weird description for a Yeti. Brown and white. It's like... Uh, it's like, you know, having a polar bear going through Shittergate and there's no toilet paper, but his face is still clean. If that makes sense. I don't know, it's just really crazy. And But again, the fact, the fascinating fact is that this particular person has a DNA test linking the Yeti to a 40,000 euro um, polar bear that has long been extinct. Crazy. Completely nuts. It is something to keep uh, an eye on. This was a recent article, not something from way back when. It's recent, in December. So I'm sure we're going to hear a little bit more about what's happening in the Himalayas and the fact that, uh, you know, either this is a Yeti or, for fuck's sake, this 40,000 euro polar bear has come back to life somehow and is now roaming free up in the Himalayas. Crazy story. This is what science does. Cryptids. We've got to solve them. It's like the fucking Pokemon. We've got to catch them all.
This next one is actually a short story out of Australia. Can I see uh, Dave uh, just joined us? Dave, you might have to check this place out. Out of Australia. Basically, this kind of, uh, again, the first article was Joy. You know, Joy with the, the cat and the dog and the ghost. And now the signs saying it's not haunted. Well, now we have a problem in Australia. We do. And actually, it is the uh, the port of Victoria, to be exact. There was a uh, there was a house that was up for sale, right? And uh, it was a grandpa's house. Old grandpa had passed away, so we uh, put the house for sale. So it turns out that um, a picture was taken of the house, right, by the realtor. Their real estate agent because they sold it and he took the picture because he wanted to show the family bada bing bada boom the house is sold check this out mate but um when you take a closer look at the picture it seems grandpa's still there the image for this episode is a picture of that house that was sent to the the family to let them know that the house was sold. And, it, you know, from far away, you see the house. Can you see the sign in the front? It says sold. Right? Bada bing. You know, he's excited. He wants people to know. He took care of business. Yeah. Apparently not. Um, Tyler Thornton, he posted the uh, two pictures. One from a distance, showing the sign. And then one up close of the kitchen. Guess who was in the kitchen? It was Grandpa. Grandpa was still there. Grandpa had passed uh, passed away. He uh, he was no longer with us, but he was there doing dishes, and that is exactly what the family believes. He uh, was in the window, but look at that image and check it out. It's actually circled in red for you, so you don't miss it. Um, according to the article, upon first glance, the picture just seemed to show an ordinary brown brick property with a uh, yellow sold sign. On the uh, front garden. But when you take a little closer. You see a, a ghostly figure. That appears to be. Not just in the kitchen window. But also washing some dishes. The quote from Tyler says. When my pop passed away. We had to sell his house in Port Victoria. The real estate agent took these photos. And sent them to my mum. Right straight away. There was nobody else. At the property at the time. The uh, the picture was taken by a realtor with... Uh, actually, the, the realtor, uh, Ray White. And, you know, he sent it to the family to let them know the deal was done. Um, but the funny thing is the family is the one that noticed immediately that uh, there was something peculiar in that kitchen window. Yeah. Um, she sent... Uh, it turns out that one of the family members, the mum... She uh, sent the pictures to uh, <laughs> sent the pictures to her son, and um, and he noticed that there was a bit of an apparition there, and asked her while they were on the phone, "Who's in the window?" And uh, the mother actually freaked out and hung up, <laughs> just hung up on him because she was freaked out of what she saw. Crazy. Now listen, what happens now? What happens now? What do you do? The uh, mom later responded to uh, the son, Thornton. I see your pop in the window doing the dishes. Look like he's got a blue t-shirt on and holding a plate. The one thing about this property and... Uh, the grandfather is that you got to know is that um, the grandfather actually built the house. He built the house and lived in it for 25 years. There is no doubt if that's grandpa hanging out, washing dishes, waiting for the new homeowners to come in, that he was definitely attached to the place. And I can imagine if you build something and um, you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, that you kind of want to stick around, make sure people take care of it, and uh, kill off any unruly cats if you need to. It is, it's kind of freaky, 
you know, but you hear about these things a lot. Usually you hear about places that have been around since the 1800s, and not something like this, a recent home, you know, within the last, you know, 50 years that was built, and um, the homeowner is so attached to it. It's a freaking little picture, but what happens now is my question. So you as a new homeowner, you're looking and you're seeing this picture being sent around of the home you just purchased with a ghost in the kitchen. What do you do? So apparently, there may not be a law in Port Victoria that says you need to report that haunting, but the deal was done already. It was sold, so I guess you can't take it back. Uh, You're done. You and Grandpa are going to be sleeping tight together as he uh, roams around the house making all kind of noise. But at least, every morning when you get up, your dishes will be done, and that's a plus. No doubt about it. You can check out the link to this article. It's in the description. Um, You know, it's crazy how these two articles tie together, but still, geez louise. Like, I would be pretty freaked out if I just purchased a house, and the next day, you know, I see people talking about the fact that there's a ghost in the window. (sighs) Sometimes you just can't. There's just no way around it. This is the uh, Dark Horror Podcast. I am Manny. I'm about to check out. But don't forget, share, like, let people know about the podcast. And again, let them know, just like UFOs and aliens, we take a different uh, look at things around here. Not the same as many other places. You know the places that get serious and they wear the tight t-shirts and run around scaring people? Yeah, those kind of shows. But in the meantime, we'll be back next year to find some more ghostly ghouls. Hopefully have some more people join to uh, let us know what their experiences have been. And looking forward to Chris coming back and uh, getting into your psyche. Finding out what you're going to be about and who might be on the other side trying to contact you. So with that said, ciao, adios, see you later. Frustration